Are we, mate? <laughs> oh, well, mate. Look at this brand new truck. black truck. Yeah, it's, it's got the it? new USA face on it. Yeah, I like it. The Transformer yeah. face with the double stack yep. LEDs. Yep. Um, do you like the orange bits? I do. I, I think it sets it off they're, nicely. They're, they're here as well. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, makes you wonder where they're going to put a bull bar on there and how do you do a chop in around that stuff, but I'm, I'm oh, sure somebody's it out. It'll come in here somewhere. smarter than I. Might be what is it? Georgia discerned that that is the position for the forward yes, facing correct. radar, yep. so that could be a bit of an issue, but somebody will come up with a fix They'll on that. They'll sort that out. Yep. Yep. ARB and so on. Steve, come and have a look at these wheels. Now, the world's vehicle manufacturers are having a bit of a lend of us in four-wheel drive land because they'll have us believe that these are suitable for going off-road. <laughs> They're not. Now, the fact that it says AT on the side wheel would have you believe that this is a proper light truck tyre suited for going off-road. No! Have a look down here. It's a 255, which is a really oddball width, 65R17, but it's got 110 load index, which is pathetic. That's only about mm, 1,100 kilos, a bit under that. But the, the devil is in the detail. It's H speed rated. That's 210 kilometres an hour. So this is a paper thin passenger car tyre masquerading as a light truck tyre. You'll remember that we've run D40 Navaras yeah, yep. in the past, and I thought they were a pretty good ute. A lot of people didn't like them, but I reckon they were okay. They yeah. did great things. And they had in this utility service. track system that you're about to show us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they they do on those. D40s. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So around 2006, I reckon. So. Nissan have had the habit of putting these aluminium rails in on the sides. They used to have them in on the floor. I'm a bit mm. disappointed they're not in the floor now because they're really handy down okay. there. Yep. But these cleats are adjustable, so you just spin them around and hook them up. And it gives you something to tie onto. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we've got the, the timber bin tied up over yep. there. Got a bin uh, for our rubbish. Yeah. So that, I reckon, is a, a really good system. Yep. So the, the general nuts and bolts of this year are really good, but the real secret to it is where... Yeah, yeah, underneath. This has got coil springs, whereas every other ute in the world runs leaf springs. And as we know, leaf springs suck. suck. So do drum brakes, but this has drum brakes, unfortunately. Yeah. But the, the, the rear suspension, this is really well sorted out. It is. The only, yep. the only car that's better than this, I think, would be the Ranger Raptor. Yep. Which is obviously coil sprung as well. Yep. And the, the old Entrek Warrior. Yep. And there'll be a new one, we believe, coming out yep. for this model as well. Yep. So this is a 2.3 litre twin turbo Nissan slash Renault engine. And that's because of the Alliance, isn't it? So it is. It is big, because of the Alliance, yep. And yep. it's hooked up to a seven speed auto. The auto, as we've sort of discovered, is a little bit lazy in its changes, yep. but, but gets along and, and picks gears okay. Yep. The engine is actually, I reckon it's pretty decent, as in as far as power goes it, it and the way it honks along. along. Yeah. It's got more grunt than the Triton. I reckon it feels gruntier than the Mazda, just seat of pants. Yeah, it might be the transmissions but, doing that for us because but, we've got yeah. one extra gear to play around True, with. True, yes, absolutely. Um, but it's that whole Renault thing. And there are issues with this engine in previous iterations of this car with uh, rear main seals going. Yep. I think there's been a few turbo issues. I mean, there's issues with all of these yeah, cars, yep. but this one just seems to be I, I a little bit more... I think we need to make that point that mm. there's no manufacturer out there that isn't no. without its problems. Even the legendary Isuzu yeah, has yeah. had its problems. Yeah. So. so how much do we make of that? We, we really don't mm. know. You'd have to put it to the test. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind betting that if you were meticulous with your services, it'd probably give you a, yeah. a pretty decent old yeah. life. But it's certainly a great thing to drive so far. It's yeah. been really good. It's also got a forward-facing uh, air intake point, which is a, a little worrying because I don't see any particularly obvious points to... Mm direct that water away. I think with either of these cars, if you're going to take them off-road and go through river crossings, you want to put a small snorkel on. Yeah. Right. So it, it's a pretty honest toiler. Um, there isn't a whole lot of space there for a, a twin battery, as is the case with the... You, you could They'll squeeze one. In They'll there. squeeze a small yeah. one in there. There'll be a bracket set up arrangement for that. As is the case with yeah. the, the Mazda Isuzu. Servicing of the, the fuel filter looks pretty, pretty easy to access, so that's a good thing. So, yeah, I, I think... You know, look, looked yeah. after, it should be a reasonable thing. Renault roots aside, it's a good thing. <laughs> and Steve. Yes, David. We've got something <laughs> that uh, we kind of like this time. We do. Well, we like a few of these utes, but this, this Nissan Navara is a bit special, isn't it? We, yeah. we drove the uh, Entrek Warrior, the, the Series 4. This is the Series 5 that yep. we're looking at today. And we'll have a video of that coming up sometime. We will, yes. Too. We've got the footage for that. Um, for a bit and of an, we an introspective and we thing. liked most of that car. We did, um, apart from the noisy engine, if I if I recall. I pretty much liked everything else. Yeah, it was like um, 
a DMAC sort of clatter, but uh, in, of another level. Yeah, yeah, not as not as nice. Um, but we love that car, most of it. And this time we've got to drive the Pro 4X, which we think, well, I think, I think you think as well, mm. is even better again. Yeah. And they fix the noise problem, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. So I think without further ado, we should roll some vision of uh, Steen and Georgia getting stuck into this truck. Coming now. So this is the Navara Pro 4 X. It is. Yes. What do you think? In a holistic sense. I really like it. Yep. Um, I think it, well, it looks bloody good, doesn't it? It's a pretty tough looking yeah, truck, isn't it? Yeah, it's tough. I love the black yep. grill and the wheels and everything. Like, getting rid of that chrome. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. yeah. I think it's easily the best of all the utes. Looks wise. Would you agree with me on that? I would, yeah. Yep. I'd say like this and the rugged heads are up there. Yeah, yeah okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. good call. Um, so yeah, I quite agree. It's a good looking, good looking beast. Yeah. It's quite unique as well because it's got a different suspension setup to yeah. the rest of the dual cab utes with um, right. that uh, oh, very well done yes, coil the, uh, sprung coil rear suspension. Sussy at the, the, back. the sussy, that's it. <laughs> yeah, now that is pretty interesting. If you expect that it would handle better off road and you know with all that extra flex that it gives. Well, that it should be it should be a hoot off road. We'll yeah. find that out at Love Day. Yeah. leaf sprung rear end. Yeah. But do you notice the way it handles or more importantly rides on the road? You don't yeah, feel that sort of shuddering coming yeah, up through the back right. end? Yeah, um, after you mentioned it before. Yeah. It's quite in the passenger seat you felt it quite a bit. Um, whereas this is very smooth. A lot, a lot more settled. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And the steering in this is nice. Yeah. Like the wheel and everything. It's smaller in this isn't it? They made it smaller. I think it's an all new steering wheel yeah. for this one. Yeah, I yeah. haven't uh, done my study on that, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Um, they've done some funny stuff in this car, so yeah. you know how we all love those cup holders that sit under the yeah. air vents that you get in the D-Max? Yeah. And you don't get in the BT50. Well, these, they were in the previous model of this. Really? So on this update, they've actually ripped them out. Why? Bizarre, Everyone loves a cup holder up there. And Navara owners of the previous model yeah. love their cup holders. Yeah. So why take it out? Yeah. It's I'd just be, bizarre. I'd be gutted if I were yeah, so it's little things, funny things like that. Uh, you've yeah. got these really nice leather seats in this one. This is the top of the range. Yeah. Yet there's no electric seat for the driver. Um, yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, no yeah. seat warmers at all. No, I mean that's like, right. None. <laughs> um, yeah, like, they're not for me, but a lot of people want them. Yeah. Um, and this is the 60. Do you remember the price on the 60? 62, 63. Yeah. yeah. Plus on roads. I guess compared to yeah the other makes and models, there's a fair few seat warmers in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. got to have a warm bum. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's interesting and the prices for me are just just mind boggling now. So sixty you know, I'm saying yeah. low sixties for this. Whereas our Trev our old Triton, who's only four years old and is the top of the range, or was the top of the range back then. Yeah. With seat warmers and leather seats and electric seats. How much? Forty four on the road, okay? <laughs> That's big. It's a big difference, isn't it? That is yeah. Big. yeah. So now they're loading this thing up with safety. It's got all the you know, yeah. emergency braking and yeah. so on now. Um, and I think as they do that and add that sort of those sorts of features, they're looking to see what they can take out. Yeah. One thing I did notice, um, the I think it's the front braking, autonomous braking sensor for yep. this, and the front forward crash sensor is that rectangular thing at the bottom edge of the grille. Oh, on I, the I front. looked. Yeah. yeah and I was just curious. So what the bull bar manufacturer has to do is relocate all of that. Yeah. Um, and that's been something they've been doing on all of these cars with that sort of technology on them for a few yeah. years now. Yeah. So it'll take a while to develop it and then they'll bring it out and it'll, all of that will continue to work and they'll have to have tested it to make sure it does work. Yeah. So it really makes their job a lot harder. Yeah. But it, it, it'll it'll happen. So they'll bring out bars for this that maintain, you know, keep that, keep that LiDAR or radar system in the right yeah. spot. Yeah, because I think compared yeah. to or this compared to the D-Max and Triton and the BT50, theirs is like those specific sensors are in the windscreen still. So yes. This is different. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think I think it sits above the driver on that yeah. side and maybe up this bit up here as yeah. well. On those cars. So what do you think of the safety systems and how they're tuned on this car? Any panic stops you? No, it hasn't been that 
that bad. I mean, oh, actually, no, in saying that, when I've pulled up on a bit of gravel on a bitumen, on a bitumen road, yeah. I'll get a warning saying unstable surface. Oh, really? Yeah. As if you don't know. Have you had that? The finger? No, yeah. No, so you go on a bit of dirt or there's a bit of gravel yeah. on the road and you get a... It's like, yes, I'm aware of that. But I'm sure there is a way um, to go into the settings in the menu here and turn it off and then you yeah. can pick and choose which well, ones you want to mute. They, they yeah. really do treat you as if you're a dumbo, don't they? <laughs> so it's uh, just the way it's all going. Yeah. But I think compared to the D-Max, um, it more. leaves you alone. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. still there. So I've noticed uh, with the autonomous emergency braking, it all... You know, the D-Max used to get caught if you had left turning traffic in front of you, you would just panic stop and yeah. literally throw you through the windscreen. Whereas yeah. this will just go beep, beep, beep to yeah. let you know. Yeah. Um, and then it clears and you can drive through. Yeah. So much it's, better tune. Yeah. It makes you feel more yeah. more calm driving, it does. which is always a nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Also the um, the dash display. I love it. Well that's new for this model. Yeah, yeah. I love how the compass is displayed there. It's yep. um, really handy easy to navigate the buttons on the steering wheel. It is very easy to use, isn't yeah. it? You find things on it, it yeah. feels natural. Yeah, yeah. No, I find it a lot. This is probably the best display on a steering wheel for the buttons. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. No, I like yeah. it. And this is all new, the infotainment system, yeah. I believe is new. Yeah. Um, and that seems to, to work fairly well. I've been driving this car for a few days around town and it hooks up yeah. on the phone really well and yeah. does its thing. Yeah. Um, so I quite like it. Um, the only thing I, I can't get my head around in this car is the drivetrain. Yeah. Which, as you know, is that um, pretty small 2.3 litre twin turbo, uh, which I think gets along all right. Um, but you've remarked it you feels a bit sluggish at times. Yeah, I just, you know, I was trying to get around the car and I had my you know, foot to the floor, but it just seemed to be yeah. lacking that, yeah. you know, oomph to get around. Yeah. Which is probably the small engine thing. Yeah, yeah. Seven speed gearbox, which uh, we both agree feels a bit sort of lazy yeah yeah it's um it changes it does it does it, it works well as far as changing goes but it's a very slow change mm -hmm. um it's, it feels unhurried yeah it's the best way to do it say it on um, the um it's a bit quieter too this car have you, have you found it a bit quieter this car even compared to the old model so the last one we had um david and i drove probably a year ago mm -hmm. was the n-track warrior version of this which yeah. is the when it comes out you can sit above this one yeah that's the one with the flash suspension and wheels and so on. Yeah. And it sounded like a chaff car. Yeah. Honestly, it sounded like a tractor. Yeah, right. Uh, it was the worst thing about the car. Yeah. And there was a lot to love about that car, but the engine noise was astonishing. Yeah. And this is really quiet. Well, so they've I've, um, put some sound deadening insulation in the in walls of the you car. You've done your homework. I didn't yeah. know that. Hey, you, Mob, you got any thoughts on the Navara? One for you, Georgia. What do you reckon? <laughs> there you go. Well, you know how we used to have two D40s back when we were training? Yeah, right to that. They were great kids. I enjoyed them. A lot of people used to poo-poo them, but in our uh, service, they were, they were great. Well, I think we should get another Navara because I'm loving this one. <laughs> wow. All right, so you better elaborate on that. What's, what's ticking the boxes? So the multi-link suspension, I'm eager to give that a go at Love Day because I reckon that's going to be nice and offer lots of flex. I'm liking the sound reduction um, in the cabin from the changed aerodynamics and sound deadening in the car. Um, yeah, no, it's just nice inside. I like how the compass is on the dash display. Um, no, it's a good truck. Maybe some of that praise you're offering is because it's a uh, top of the range model, it's got all the fruit on it. But Steve, you and I were talking earlier that we thought... That cabin was a whole lot quieter than the uh, Entrek Warrior that we had a year ago. Yes, and it turns out we were right because Georgia was actually saying that, uh, that they've done quite a bit of work to cut the noise down. Yeah, responding to uh, people's criticisms. Because it did sound like a chaff cutter, like a tractor. I don't know whether it's in the fire or whether they're using thicker insulation in there. Yeah, look, I don't know. Possibly. Um, I think the front windows are possibly double glazed as well, I read somewhere. Um, so, but whatever they've done, it's, it's uh, working a treat. Roger that. See you at Love Day. 
Yeah, see you there. Well, that looked like a bit of fun. It was. And I need to ask you now, so everything you and Georgia were saying about the Navara on-road, yep. so that was right. So what's it like to overtake? How did it steer? How did it stop? Uh, it's good on all those points. So it's only got a little 2.3 litre twin turbo, but it gets up and goes. Yep. I actually think it's got more. It's definitely got more grunt than the Triton. Yep. I reckon it's got more grunt than the D-Max and the BT50. Oh, it wow. feels it from the seat of the pants, as okay. I said. Yep. Uh, it's got that seven-speed gearbox, yep. which I think is the one shared with the same gearbox that's in the... Y62 Patrol, it's a right. Jacko unit, okay. and it's a, bit, it's a bit slow and mushy to change, but it does its job, and, and it's quite intuitive. And if it's handling the torque of that V8... You're not going to have any troubles with it in the Navara, are you? are going to break no, it in the Navara. No. So it um, seems like a good thing. Beautiful to drive on the road of all of the utes. Mm. It's the one, I think. Okay. Um, and we have driven an Amarok for a while. Mm. No loss. Um, <laughs> can't say that, David. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can do whatever we like. Okay. Um, but we've driven the Ranger recently, last year, the mm. Wild Track. I think the Navara is better, right. and it's all to do with that coil sprung rear yeah, and course. the suspension tune they've got going in it yep. now. It's yep. a good thing. Okay, so knowing all of that, we better now put it to the test off-road. So Have some real fun with it. Let's check let's that, that out in the yep. sand at Loveday 4x4 Park in the Riverland in South Australia. <laughs> So we spent the afternoon at Love Day off-roading. Yes. And we've tackled some hills. We've tackled some pretty bumpy sort of sandy tracks. We're in some sand now. We're in now. some sand now. Some soft sand. And you've had a really good go at it in the sand. This is actually yeah. going quite well. Um, what do you think? Well, it hasn't yeah, bogged down or lacked any momentum from what I could tell. No, no, no stability control or traction control interference? No stability no. control will be off. I mean... You can hear the traction kicking in, but yeah. it wasn't. So it's still issue. there interfering yeah, a little bit, is it? Yeah, but I didn't get bogged down like yeah. you would in a D Max or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. Because yeah. the previous model of this was derided by a few outlets, media outlets as yeah. being really not good in sand at all. Yeah, right. No. So maybe they've tweaked things there a little bit as well. The hill climb it was a bit of a not too gnarly, but it was a tiny bit technical and there was a few yeah changes in direction. Yeah, and yeah. a couple of sort of um, um, spots where we got cross axled and so on. Yeah. And handled that pretty easily, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. Sure we'll make it up over this hill. Look at that. Straight into the bush. <laughs> We missed the bush by the way guys, it's alright. <laughs> no scratches on this no scratches. car. Yeah. Did you make it? Oh, no. That was a bit ambitious. <laughs> we won't hold that against the Navarra. It's as I... It's a bit of a driver. Expect to come over the, the top then and see the camera car. <laughs> My car. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Take out the cameraman, Steve. Sorry, Steve. It's actually pretty decent in the sand. It so, is. Oh, it just yeah, it quit. Just, just keeps going. I know. Plenty of low down torque. Yeah. Uh, and we're running 20, 20 psi, which is probably up around, I'm going to guess, about 24 now that they've warmed up. Yeah. And it's doing all right. We should really have lower pressures. Yeah, but it just manages so to pull through. It's a bit of a beast. Yeah. So we're kind of starting to like this Navara, aren't we? Really? I already liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so out of all the utes, if you were buying a ute now, which one mm. did you get now that you've driven the Navara? Oof. Um... Recently driven the D-Max. Yes, the Jeep. BT50 today. Yeah. Uh, the Jeep. Yeah. What else have we driven lately? Um, Triton. Triton. Which is, a, which is a, one of our favourites. Yeah. Uh, so far, I'd say between this and the Trident. Yeah. Yeah. No, interesting. What about you? I'd say exactly the same. Yeah. 
In fact, well, I'm actually I'm actually edging towards this over the trot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a pretty well sorted car right now. Yeah. The only thing we did notice was the pogo sticking of the rear. Yeah, that was a the bit rear severe. end. So, so and you notice that in coil sprung cars, yeah. uh, if you get the right sort of little moguls together, the yeah. right frequency, yeah. um, you can get everything dancing. Yeah. It's quite uh, unnerving. Mm. You don't get so much in the least front cars because they just they iron all that out. Yeah. You spend the rest of the time bashing your head against the window. Yeah. Why well, this rough stuff really well, doesn't it? It does. Well, that was pretty specky. Those sand hills are astonishing. Yeah, they're good fun, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're great fun. There's nothing like doing yeah. a bit of steering wheel work and getting yeah. a big rooster yeah. tail shower. You want to always know the Wilsons are in the sand when there's a rooster tail. Correct, correct. Yep. <laughs> so off-road, we reckon it's a, a pretty neat thing. It is, in stock form, it's, it's, it's really good. It didn't stop through anything we did, except that one bit on the sand hill with yep. me yep. in that footage, but that was driver error. And, and I think, too, we should be giving the car some concessions here because we'd only set the pressures at a... A modest reduction. Yes. It was only 20 psi. Yeah, and they would have heated up. It wasn't a it wasn't a cold day yeah. as such, and we and, did a fair bit of driving. And the sand, surprisingly, I thought it was going to have a yeah. bit more moisture, and it was actually very, very dry and, and, yeah. and loose. So yeah. they were going to struggle. Um, I noticed as I was watching from the uh, from the side that the gearbox seemed to be pretty ideally suited to yep. most of the terrain, like the good spread of gears. Um, it seemed in low range to shift up pretty pretty smartly. Yep, absolutely. Yep. I remember one hill in particular where you started off in drive, and I thought mm, maybe not such a good idea. But mm. it got out of first gear really quick, mm. which I was I was pleased about because usually they labour. In well, first in the sand, I used drive the whole time. I didn't bother right. picking a gear. You know, there's there's old school Dave because yeah. I'll uh, start them off in second gear, get mm. them up in the third pretty quickly, yeah. and then yeah. this is on your driver training and courses and, and so on. No, 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 even when I'm out in the field. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I like to stir the box. Oh, manually. when you say, okay, you're talking about the car, not the, not your students this time. No, I'm talking yeah. about driving the car right. myself. Okay. Um, I would rarely use drive. Yeah. Uh, when I'm out in the field, because I always know. What's your D Max got in it? The black one. Well, it's a manual. The, yeah, that, that's that what that I'm one. used to. Yeah. But the new ones in auto. In the sand autos, just leave them in, in drive and uh, go for it. I don't buy that all the time. Yeah. Because in drive, if you kick them off uh, in certain sandy situations, they'll kick off in first gear and they'll, they'll bog Bury down. themselves. You, yep. ca you can't get started. So mm. I always like to manually select second, bump them up mm. into third pretty quickly. And third and fourth are usually the sweet spots. Or just drive and have a gentle foot on the throttle. <laughs> throttle control, that's yeah, what it's all about. Anywhere. Throttle control. So whilst we got to find out about the traction control system in the sand and we worked that out pretty, yep. pretty quickly, we didn't really get to play with the diff lock until we went to Cockatoo later. That's correct. Yeah, so Your training ground up in the Ross in Valley. The Ross Valley, yep. yeah. So we put it through a big old deep old gully and it worked a treat. It came it up really quickly, went out pretty quickly yep. and uh, locked up the back end very, very nicely. So it does. It works really well, as does the traction control on the yeah. Navara. And you'll see that vision when we cut this episode up with a comparison against the Mazda BT50. Hmm. So, yeah, off-road, it's pretty stellar. It's well, it's a good thing. We were saying before, you know, as far as traction control goes, which is important these days in these cars, it's that far off the Hilux, which yep. is probably leading the field in the Utes. Yep. Uh, up there with, well, it's probably, would you say it's ahead of Ranger? Yes. Yeah, it's definitely ahead of Triton yep. by a little bit. Yep. So it's, it's up the top of the pack. Yep. Uh, it's a good thing off-road. Yep. Yeah, it keeps its wheels on the ground. Yes. That's plenty of traction. It's surprising because yeah. a lot of people are quick to dismiss them. Mm. I've actually had a pretty good run out of D40s back in the day. I uh, found them to be uh, a great yeah. enjoyed them immensely. But anyway, well, what's that all about? Why is this, why is this Navara so derided? Why has it got this stigma? I don't know. I think it's an easy mm. thing to do. If you're yep. a Toyota lover, it's easy to yep. put them down. Yep. Uh, maybe that's it and old habits die hard. Well, I've got to say I really liked it to the point that, as you know, we're selling Trev the MQ Triton. Looking for a replacement to do a build. And I like this Navara so much, this Profile Rex, I actually asked Nissan for one. Not for free. They wouldn't wow. give me one for free. Wow. But to find me one that I could buy. Okay. Turns out the Mitsubishi pipped them at the post by a day. Yep. But I would quite happily have bought one. Right. Okay. Yeah. Even at 60k, which I think is a lot of money yeah, for, a, a for one of those recommendation. Rex. So on, on that pricing thing, mm. I think you can buy a manual for 58 something. Mm. And the autos are 63, both yeah. plus on road. Who buys a manual? <laughs> Except for you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this little review of the Navara Pro 4X. We think it's a pretty good truck. 
It is. And uh, yeah, you'll hmm. find it at your local Nissan dealer and maybe it's got a place in your garage. <laughs>